Hey everybody, um, back again. I wanted to kind of go through uh, writing a method that was gonna help you generate some algebra questions. Okay, so like I asked for you guys for um, a randomly generated set of algebra questions that come in this form. Um, and if you kind of solve this algebraically and you, and you subtract B from both sides, you're gonna get AX equals C minus B. This is just algebra one stuff. Hopefully this doesn't look too intimidating. And after dividing both sides by A, you're gonna get your answer is, uh, is the quantity C minus B divided by A. So I asked you guys to only ask, only allow the question to be asked if this answer was gonna be an integer. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, so let's build this out. I'm gonna leave this here. I'll delete it at the end because obviously it's not Java. Uh, but let's go ahead and build the loop. The question loop is going to go um, from the beginning being uh, zero all the way up to the number of questions that, that we have. Um, defined at the beginning and the questions just go up by one. Now we're going to come back to this because we're going to need to kind of come to terms with the fact that maybe we don't want to count the question because it didn't turn out as an integer and I'll show you guys how to do that or at least how I thought of doing it. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you uh, manage this challenge. So let's let's first come up with some our three constants a, b, and c and let's say we want numbers from 0 to 50. Okay, so we're gonna say it's gonna be a math.random. So this is how we kind of randomize things. And it's gonna be give us a random double. And if we want a number from zero to 50, you can just think of it as this, right? So it's 50 times math random, and you wanna cast it as an int um, so that we only get the integer part of it. Um, so you're giving Java permission to think of the number as an int. Um, we're gonna come back and change this in a little bit because we're gonna have a problem. Some of you guys already know what that problem is, um, and that's that we can't divide by zero. I will come back and fix that in just a minute, okay? So let's at least know that this is giving us an integer from one to 50, or zero to 50 right now. Um, and then we're gonna prompt the, the, uh, the question, right? So what we're gonna do is check to see if the answer is going to be an integer, okay? So how do we check to see if this answer is gonna be an integer? Well, um, so let's kind of just stub this out. So if the answer is an integer, so let's go ahead and just kind of give us some something to work with here. If the answer is an integer, then here's what I want to do. I want to uh, display the question. I'm going to move this back up here. So if the, we'll, we'll fill this in in a second. If the answer is an integer, I want to display the question. If it's not, Right, so if the answer is not an integer, I want to do something else. I want to pretend like this loop never happened. Pretend like the loop never happened, and try again. Okay, so what's going to happen here is, how do we um, check to see if the answer is an integer? Um, we have to see if c minus b is cleanly divisible by a. All right, so this is where we need to say, well, if the quantity C minus B is cleanly divisible by A, what, what that means is if we take the modulo of A and it was cleanly divisible. So let's take a look at this. So if C minus B, when divided by A, leaves a remainder of zero. Remember, that's what the mod does. It tells us what the remainder is. So we have the quantity C minus B, let's say that's like 10, and divided by when divided by 3, What's 10 divided by 3? Well, it gives you a remainder of 1. So that question would not be a good one. We don't want to give our user um, the task of trying to guess how many uh, 0.3333s to write after the decimal. So let's just you know not, not have that question be displayed. So only numbers that are cleanly divisible will enter uh, this block. And this is when we want to display them. Um, so this is the check to see if the answer is an integer. If C minus B is cleanly divisible by A, meaning it leaves a remainder of zero. So let, then we would, uh, we would go ahead and display the question, which would look like this. A, let's concatenate it. That letter A concatenated with X plus, and then let's go ahead and concatenate the B answer. And then let's say equals, and then we'll concatenate the C. So that's going to give us uh, the question. It'll look like it'll look like this up here. It'll look like ax plus b equals c, but those will actually be numbers now, right? So then let's prompt the answer, or at least maybe we can just say what's x, right? So we can say what is x. All right. So then we're going to get the user's answer, and it's going to be a it's going to be an int. Okay. So we know for sure it's going to be an int because of this check that we performed right here. So the int user answer 
is going to be the scanner's next int. Okay, and like I usually do, I take the next line so it doesn't muddle up my my uh, future interactions with the scanner. So if it's the case now that the answer is correct, meaning if the user's answer is actually equal to the actual answer, and what the actual answer is is this, right? So let's just grab that. So if the if the user's answer is actually double equals to, right? If the user's answer is right, then what we want to do is just take the number of correct. And I think, uh, let's see, did, did I do I have that somewhere? Correct answers. Okay, that's what I called mine. So you can call yours whatever. So we're going to increment that. So we're going to say, okay, the correct answers go up by one. There's a couple of different ways to do that. And then we go ahead and, and the loop will start over, right? So if otherwise the answer is wrong, the answer is wrong, it's just going to run out of this if statement and then kind of start over and it just doesn't count as a correct answer. So now here comes our next challenge, right? We're going to try to decide what to do if the answer was not an integer. If we did get something like a solution was going to be like 5.21111, you know, something nasty, um, we want to pretend like this loop never happened. So every time the loop goes through and we assume that we got a good question, the I goes up, right? The I increments. So what happens if we fail this test over and over again? Let's say we wanted 10 questions and, you know, the, the computer generated all of these random numbers and it turns out none of them, of the 10 things that it tried, uh, were going to give us an integer answer. Well, then the, the user wouldn't get any questions. So how about this? Let's say this. If the answer was not going to be an integer, we'd go to the else and then let's pretend like this never happened. Well, what do we do to I? So we don't want really I to do plus plus. We wish it didn't do that. So let's actually offset that and say, hey, I set yourself back and then it will go ahead and add to itself again. And it's almost like nothing happened and the loop is trying again. Does that make sense? I hope so, right? So if I was, let's say, you know, five here, we're on the fifth question, it fails the test. So it wasn't really good set of A, B, and C. It will just go back to being four at the end of the loop. It will increment and it's five again. And it just gets to try again until it gets a good question. And then it will go back up and, and increment. Okay, so this is how we deal with... Um, this is to pretend like the loop never happened and try again. Um, so now we have this problem. If A is zero, that's a really bad thing because the program will die. It happened to me a couple times. Um, if your A value is zero, then it will not uh, it'll not work. Well, so how do we do that, right? So it's possible that this random number coming out could be zero, right? So then the integer cast on zero is still zero. Let's add one to this to avoid any numbers that are coming out as zero for A, because we get a divide by zero exception. Um, and to offset that, let's go ahead and change this to 49. That way, if this number is indeed comes out to be 49, um, the highest it could be bumped up to is 50. So really, we're still getting numbers from, from zero to 50. Um, and this way of doing it ensures that there's no possible way we'd be asking Java to divide by zero. And we wouldn't be asking the user to either. Um, your program will die. Um, if you ask it to divide by zero, um, and that happens, sometimes some people may have run into that. That's how I would do it if I were you. Uh, this is how you can avoid the zero problem. Um, anyway, this was the algebra one. I thought this was kind of fun. Um, maybe we can go over it in class, and I hope this video was helpful. Appreciate your feedback and comments, and I'll see you guys on Wednesday.